Corin, you've seen quite a bit of uh, Chief Bryant as he's been the MC for the opening session. But Chief Bryant is the, the face and the spokesperson for the IFC, but behind him is a tremendous board of directors. The board of directors are people who put in an untold amount of hours representing you, representing the fire service, and representing the IFC. They have to look at emerging issues. They have to look at what may come down the road that's not anticipated. They have to deal with the membership. They have to deal with the business of the association. It's a major commitment for each one of them to do that on a day in and day out basis. They have to think on three levels. They think about their department. They have to think about the association and our members, that's you. And they have to think about the industry as a whole and then try to balance all those different needs. At this time, I would ask all of the IFC board of directors and their partners to please stand up and be recognized for all the hard work that you do. Before them has been a fantastic group of men that have led up to this point. Today we'll have our first woman president. But up to this point, all of the IFC presidents have been men. They have spent and laid the groundwork to give the IFC the success that we have today. I would ask that all of our president's council, which are past presidents of the IFC, please stand and let's thank them for the service that they've given to the IFC. Chief Bryant recognized the hard work that our staff does, and I'm blessed to get to lead a fantastic group of folks. And they are the ones that put together this conference and deal with every last little detail down to where the cameras sit, to who's going to take pictures and, and what time each thing happens. And it's a tremendous uh, honor to be able to lead that group. I uh, would ask all of you to let's thank them one more time for the work that they do for each and every one of us. Before we do the installation of officers, I just want to do a, a couple quick things about the organization. As you've heard throughout this morning, you've seen many of the programs that we have. Last year we had uh, some comments that said there's too much advertisements during the general session. We don't look necessarily at those as advertisements, but to educate you about the programs that are available to help you do your job better. And that's really what a professional association is about. Giving you tools that you need and having them ready for you before you know you need them. Each one of these are tools that are available to you, they're free for your use, and we encourage you to use those. The IFC's membership is strong, we're continuing to grow now. We're growing about 3.5% uh, uh, just this year alone. That's a tremendous thing for us considering the downturn that uh, we took with the recession and as everything got tougher over the years. We continue to strive to put programs out there that you can use, such as the ones you've seen here today, but also to look at things that are just emerging. We're gonna be dealing with the unmanned aircraft system issue. We continue to deal with near miss and trying to uh, get funding, and we are now moving over and assisting our police brothers and sisters in a police near miss system. We've worked on our volunteer workforce solutions issues with the state of Virginia and Connecticut and giving volunteers different tools they can use to better recruit and get people involved. Our hazardous materials committee has spent untold amount of hours dealing with the Balkan uh, fuel issue. They've dealt with a whole lot of things as it relates to changes at the national level at the Department of Transportation and they're there representing you all the time. We have a Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act task force that's looking at what are the impacts to you as it relates not only to patient transport, but what is the Cadillac tax going to do? These are all things that they're doing day in and day out for you. So I think that we are trying to stay on top of that. We'll continue to, to represent you. And if you have suggestions, we always take those. 
But I would encourage each and every person, if you're not a member, join. If you are a member, get involved in your division, in your section, in committees, and in the leadership of your organization. Earlier we did a commemoration of the Vietnam veterans. And one thing that uh, we have been able to work out is at our membership pavilion in booth 2131, as we will have a Vietnam veteran there to hand out pins to people that are Vietnam veterans. And if you'll stop by that membership pavilion uh, tomorrow, Friday, between noon and two, or on Saturday between 8.30 and 10.30, we have a, vet a Vietnam veteran that will be able to give you your own personal pin commemorating that. I would highly encourage all of you to stop by and pick up the pins and for everyone else to stop by and visit with the ISC booth. You'll be able to see and learn about a lot of the things that we talked about this morning and things that I may have mentioned here. At this point, I'd like to call Chief Bryant back to the podium to begin the swearing in of officers. By the way, just before I go any further, I've got to say that, uh, and he knows it, that I'm proud of what my son does for a living, and I love him very much. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get there. <laughs> the IFC is a world-renowned organization. Our members are all leaders. To lead an organization of leaders such as ours, it takes men and women of great vision, integrity, and commitment to excellence. We are most fortunate to have such individuals of high character and commitment who lead the divisions, sections, committees, and task forces. Let's give these important leaders a round of applause. <laughs> it's now time to install your 2015-2016 IFC officers. I ask the officers to step forward as I call your name. Chief Rotome Kirk, Austin, Texas Fire Department, to be installed as IFC President and Chair of the Board. <laughs> Chief John Sinclair, Kittitas Valley Fire and Rescue Department in Ellensburg, Washington, the legislative position. Chief Tom Jenkins, Rogers, Arkansas Fire Department, elected to the position of second vice president. <laughs> Chief Kerr has asked Chief Ernie Mitchell, U.S. Fire Administrator, to administer the oath of office. Chief Mitchell. Good morning. It's a great honor to be back on stage in front of you. It's a great honor to deliver the oath of office to our distinguished newly elected officers, but uh, it's a special honor. I, I mentioned when I left stage, it'll be a special time. It's a special honor because my friend, Rhoda May, has invited me to perform this function. It was uh, years ago when I was running for the ball board, and Rhoda May was busy encouraging me to run for the board. And after I decided, we were talking about maybe one day she would run and become president of the IAFC. And, and so this is really a, a personally gratifying and special time for me. Congratulations. Um, as a display of respect, would everyone please stand for the installation ceremony. You have been chosen by your fellow members to lead them in the work of the IAFC for the next year. A significant honor has been bestowed upon you, which also requires accepting a great responsibility. It is our honor to install you as the officers for the upcoming term, which formally takes effect on Saturday afternoon at the conclusion of the conference. Please raise your right hands and repeat after me. I swear that I will support the Constitution and the bylaws, and at all times bear true allegiance to the goals and purposes of the International Association of Fire Chiefs. 
I will perform the duties and responsibilities of my office to the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations. You are challenged to lead the association to a new and higher level of skill and ability. Your leadership, foresight, and loyalty of purpose will determine the success and progress of this great organization. I therefore charge you to carry out the duties of your office while keeping your actions elevated, clear, and focused on continued progress for the members of the International Association of Fire Chiefs. For those members gathered here, you have conferred upon these officers the solid responsibility of leadership, and it becomes your duty to wholeheartedly support them in every undertaking for the advancement of the association and the common good of all members of the IAFC. Congratulations to all of you, and let's offer another round of applause to your IAFC board members. Thank you, please be seated. Exciting stuff. So now it's my privilege to introduce your new second vice president, Chief Tom Jenkins, to say a few words. I'm honored to be in front of you this morning. Uh, one of the most beneficial uh, aspects of running for second vice president was to have an opportunity to meet and visit with so many of you that represent the fine work that, are be that is being done in fire and emergency services organizations across this United States. The job ahead of us for the coming year and, and in my time uh, cycling through the chairs is, is serious and uh, it is important work. I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and I'm looking forward to working with the talent that is on stage with me, and you have my word that will serve you well. Because the interesting thing is, it's not, it's not a factor of how big your de department is, or how, uh, whether your career, or volunteer, or combination, how complex it is. We all have similar issues, similar problems, and hopefully similar solutions. I'll work hard for you, I'm looking forward to serving you, and I appreciate all your attention and, uh, and service this morning. So thank you very much. We'll see you in the years to come. And now your first Vice President, Chief Johnson Clark. Thank you, Keith, and thank you to everyone that is in the room today. It is my great honor to work with some of the greatest minds in the fire service and to have represented the fire service over the last 20 years working with the EMS section. The opportunity to come to the board has been a tremendous opportunity and I just want to highlight one thing that was said. I've had the opportunity to see a lot of great leaders. And rarely have I seen somebody that is served with such humility and that epitomizes the term servant leader than our outgoing president, Keith Bryant. Thank you. He is a true servant leader and somebody that I hope to emulate um, even a tenth of his humility. I do want, um, I've only got a short few seconds here, but I do want to ask your indulgence for one thing. As you go about your busy day here, make sure that you go to classes, make sure that you seek out new friends, but keep one piece of your mind on the folks back home. The folks back home for me are in the process of fighting some of the deadliest wildfires that we've ever seen in the state of Washington. So part of my attention every day is divided between here and the concern for my folks back home. And I know that that is the same for you. 
So keep your firefighters at home in your thoughts and prayers. And if you would, keep the folks that are on the fire line right now um, in the deadliest fire season in our state's history and in the West Coast history in your thoughts and prayers. I work for you, thank you, and the one final thing is, I wouldn't be able to be here if it wasn't for the love of my life. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Anybody that knows me well enough knows what a history person I am. And if you can't make history the best thing, next best thing is to be on the uh, front end of history. And so with that, and without any further ado, I want to, enter, uh, as far as the IFC is concerned, I want to utter this historic praise, or phrase, and now I'd like to introduce to you, Rhoda May Kerr, as your new president, Madam President. Yeah! morning. So let me first say good morning and thank you for that standing ovation. That really is humbling. So there really are no words that adequately express to you what an honor it is to stand before you as your new president and to look forward to what lies ahead of us in this next year. But I wouldn't be where I am today without a whole host of people that have been supporting me and I'd like to take a few minutes to thank them. So please indulge me. First, to all the members of this great organization, thank you so much for this immense privilege. I promise to represent and serve you with the utmost dignity, commitment, and gratitude that this responsibility deserves. Second, to the men and women of the Austin Fire Department, some of who are here today, thank you for your selfless service and the great work that you do day in and day out not only in the support of your fellow firefighters, but to the citizens of Austin and Central Texas. You make me so proud to say that I am the Austin Fire Chief. Third, to Mark Ott, the Austin City Manager. Thank you first for hiring me and for your support in my presidential campaign. You've often said that I was the best hire you ever made and I promise to continue representing you and the city of Austin on the international stage with grace and humility. To my friends and family, many of you who traveled here today, thank you for your love and your support, not only today, but throughout my career. And to my sister Abby, who has always been my biggest dear leader, I love you. And finally, Many of you may not know that I come from a long line of firefighters. In fact, I'm the fourth generation. I would not be here now today without them. So thanks to my dad, my grandfather, and my great-grandfather. I like to think that they're looking down today on this momentous event, and they are just extraordinary, extraordinarily proud. So as your president, there are three areas I want to focus on in the coming year. Building upon the past, responding to the present, and preparing for the future. Sir Winston Churchill once said, those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. I believe we can continue to learn important lessons from the past by reducing firefighter deaths, including line of duty deaths and preventable medical conditions, and focusing on the well-being and safety of our firefighters through positive change. More than any other time in our history, the fire service has made great strides in adopting, in our day-to-day -day world, successful business practices. Respond to the present. Sustainability as both a global organization and individual de departments. 
building relationships in the community, and exploring and addressing our medical mission. Active shooter events, management of the wildland urban interface, and the impact to the service delivery of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act are all examples of the present day challenges we must face and continue to face head on. And then finally, preparing for the future. President John F. Kennedy said, change is the law of life. Those who look only to the past or present are certain to miss the future. As we prepare for what lies ahead, we need to focus on embracing cutting edge technology such as the rescue robotics in emergency management and reducing the impact of fire. And what does that mean, this reduction of impact of fire is critical to my overall vision of zero fire deaths. The installation of working smoke alarms in at-risk neighborhoods, residential sprinklers, stricter code enforcement, and incorporating research into operational best practices are all examples of proactive steps we can take to enhance firefighter and citizen safety. There is no more honorable profession than serving your fellow human beings. Ours is a rich, historic one of loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, personal courage, and especially our honor and our integrity. We are all privileged to call ourselves firefighter, and these values are ones we all strive to exemplify. And as we look forward to this next year, I want to challenge each of you to have the courage to do your part towards realizing my vision of zero fire deaths. And I'm not going to presume to tell you what that might mean in your department or your community. But what I do know is that at least one thing you can do to help. Maybe it's conducting a smoke alarm drive in a particular area of your community. Maybe it's lobbying before your local legislators for residential sprinklers. Or maybe it's ensuring that your firefighters get their physicals every year and stay healthy. Whatever it is, and no matter the size of your organization, there is something that you can do. Now is the time to do it, and I cannot do it alone. So you have to promise them, you need to promise me, and promise your brothers and sisters in the fire service that you will do everything you can to ensure everyone goes home. And again, thank you for this enormous honor to serve as the first woman president of the IAFC in 142 years. But I do not want to be the only one and I do not want to be the last. But I am thrilled that I get to be able to break another glass ceiling. And here's to next year. Thank you. That means so much to me. Thank you. So I have a couple of housekeeping items and then we are almost done. So, first, uh, thank you Chief Sinclair and Chief Jenkins that are probably back sitting in front of me somewhere. I look forward to working with you in the months to come along with the rest of the IEFC Board of Directors and our members. And most of all, thank you to Chief Bryant for his unwavering leadership this past year. I look forward to the presidential celebration on Saturday when we'll officially pass the torch of the IAFC presidency. And the few housekeeping items for those of you that are looking to have, make sure you get validation code, it is 5059. Immediately, and put this code into your, immediately into your mobile device using the transcript button in the FRI app or for entry later at IAFC.org backslash FRI transcripts, sorry, FRI transcripts to complete the evaluation and receive credit for attending this session. 
The IASC business meeting will begin in a few moments in this ballroom. We need as many members as possible to stay and remain in the ballroom for that business meeting. And also, please be sure to visit our exhibitors, interact with them, and thank our partners and sponsors for their much, appreci much appreciated support of the IFC. The general session is adjourned, and I will officially call the business meeting to order. So let's take a moment to see where we'll be in 2016, and then we'll take a 10-minute recess to allow our non-members to exit the ballroom. Thank you very much.